So think about that. They're going to be running through, just in the smallest of the initial projects here, 15 million tons per year. Now to $25 per ton, okay, now it's getting up around, you know, like I said, $85 a ton. Now do the math on that. That's around $1.25 billion per year. When it was $25 a ton, it was around, what, $375 million, something like that. And good afternoon, everyone. Well, I was unsuccessful to get the uh, microphone up and running. It requires a USB, so bear with me on the sounds here. Uh, today, what I wanted to do was put some rock wool cubes inside the Omega rotary grow system, as well as what we have here, Eden Grow Tower, both. And that'll be inside these with the cap on it. But as we're doing that, I had a little list of notes here I wanted to uh, throw down for you while I was preparing some seeds. So we're going to start off with the Moringa seeds here, Moringa oleifera. And you can get these anywhere online. This is just a PKM1, and they have PKM2 also. It's just a different, um, I wouldn't even say hybrids, but just different varieties that are coming from different locations. These are from India, so they're going to be a little bit different from Africa if you order them. So again, everything's rock wool, and this is going into what we have mostly assembled behind us. Eden Grow Systems. So what I'm going to do, or the, the Eden Grow Tower, is just take one. These things are, you know, they have this little bit of paper on them. That's from nature. When they fall, boom, they grab into the ground. So I'm just going to press one of those in there. And as if Jeff told me, don't even pre-soak them. Just go ahead, push it in, and then... Uh, you know, drop your cube in there. And then put the tie, put the cap on it, but not too tight. You know, not too super, too super crazy. Just get it in there, a little bit enough for a stem to emerge out of there, which would be something like this. So I have my thing encapsulated, and I probably want to even it up eventually here. I might have a little too much in it. But uh, that's what I'm going to be doing here is taking this and then inserting into the tray right here. So as I'm doing that, and I'm just going to work with Moringa for a second, I wanted to talk about Scotland, SNP, Scotland National Power. Uh, what they've done is to make way for windmills, they cut down 15.7 million trees since the year 2000. And I thought, that's crazy. Here's another one. That's 1,700 per day, if you want to do the math on that, which I did. Actually, it was done in the article. And I thought, what a joke. You know, they've been talking about uh, carbon offset credits and doing all these things before station. The Rockwell cubes are super easy to work with here. And again, like I said, I'm just going to press those right in the top. And I just have to fold it over slightly depending on where they end up laying in the in their uh, perspective places. But you hear all these different novel things, and as I did with Mike Adams on Friday, our show, every 2 to 3 p.m. on Friday, every other, uh, Navigator is a company, and they have a CO2 pipeline called the Heartland Greenway. It sounds good, like, yeah, they're going to sequester CO2. And this is a carbon capture underground storage, CCUS. So it's a little bit different than just carbon offsets, where I plant trees, I don't deforest the land, the amount of CO2 each acre of my forest can sequester, then I should get an offset of that of around $20 per annum per ton. One of the secrets to reducing the appearance of aging is to consider your collagen levels. When your collagen levels decline, as they naturally do with age, your skin begins to show visible signs of aging, like those fine lines and wrinkles. That's because collagen is essential for maintaining skin elasticity and hydration and for bringing a youthful glow to the face. That's why I highly recommend including collagen into your daily regimen. Go to healthwithadapt2030.com or click on that link in the description box below. That's healthwithadapt2030.com. And now on with the video. 
And what that would do then, I could sell that to a company who's polluting in another country and they consider that an offset. Like I grew something, they polluted something. I cleaned the air over here, they polluted the air over there. I know as scammy as that sounds, that's the way it's truly working right now. But let me lay these up. I'm trying to add here while I talk at the same. I can't even add up to eight. Oh wait, I did. I got my tray. I'm getting ready to put all those in the in the cubes here, and then we'll move over with Ted in the Omega Grow. And I got a, yeah, that's a bad cut on my part. That's not theirs. That came from the Rock Wool cubes, and I just I didn't have a knife, so I'm tearing it. And I'm using an ice pick to try to get the hole perfectly in the center. Boom. And then put it, because I want to do perillia seeds in this one. Because the rotary grow, uh, I'm going to lay it in like green, red, dark purple. We got the Mizuna, uh, the perillia, and then I got wasabina, which is a, a type of... So, juxum up. That is the perillia. That's another name for perillia. I know this is backwards. And the wasibina right here, wasibina. I'll try to turn the film around when we do this. And then we got the uh, Mizuna, which is this one. Just I did a seed exchange with somebody and it came out that this was the Mizuna. All right, so I'd like to have a little color and also a little bit higher value product in the machines. Now, it is summer, so a lot of people are growing a lot of stuff and they're like, hey, whatever. But hey, whatever, as soon as this grow season finishes in about two months, you're going to be going, oh, I wish I could get some fresh veggies from somewhere. And that's exactly what you're going to need to be thinking about as we progress through and into this uh, weird, weird world that we're ascending and descending into. So the reason I was talking about the Heartland Pipeline Navigator to Pipeline is... The carbon removal credits, they're switching systems here. So we're, we're familiar with carbon offset credits and you know I'll, I'll plant a forest and you can buy that from me. Well, that ceases in 2030. That absolutely ceases in 2030. And what they're gonna do is then go to the carbon capture storage requirement, which means that any CO2 emitted in any industrial process will need to be captured at the source, liquefied and sent down these pipelines. And then what they do is they have a, a, usually it's from ethanol and fertilizer production, at least now in the Midwest. And what they'll do is then they're gonna push that underground into caverns or some sort of geologic formations, whatever that means, quote unquote, geologic formations. And uh, you're gonna be paying that carbon offset or carbon sequestration storage fee. So when things start to get really pricey, uh, that's, what's, that's what's happening because they're going to start bagging you with the tax. So when they talk about global carbon taxes, it's going to be more of the companies operating are going to build the infrastructure to sequester the CO2 underground. But they're not going to take the hit for doing business. You are. You're going to pay for that. Now the whole carbon sequestration thing is there's a huge battle for eminent domain cur currently on the, on the land. Farmers are like, you're gonna run a pipeline through, pays for three years of crops at descending value. Like the first year, they say, all right, well, the pipeline's going in, we're gonna do a lot of construction, we need to remediate the land, and we know that you can't grow your hay or whatever crops are gonna be there for this first year. So, we will give you uh, full value for that acreage. And the newest thing on the block is when they have a rail derailment, they're trying to get the land condemned so then they can purchase the entire farm at pennies on the dollar. I won't go into that right now. But the second year, they're given 50% of the land value. Even if the land's not remediated and you still can't grow or produce on it, you're still getting 50% of that value of crop A. This is where the eminent domain fight is coming in. And a lot of people are absolutely going at them with the eminent domain. As well, they should. I mean, you can't just come across because it's a non-public utility. It's a private company that's trying to run the pipelines down. Now, I get it. If you want to put a natural gas pipeline in or you need to put a highway in there or something, I get it. You know, there's no other way to put electrical lines except through your property to the next area that needs electricity that they're developing or something. Okay, that's written in. Eminent domain, that's a well-known practice of, uh, you know, at least in some very un- uh, scrupulous counties or whatnot of getting people off the land for you know pork belly projects etc. 
And I knew something was going to continue to come down the pike with this. You know why? Because when they tried the same thing, I think it was Vermont, they tried to get somebody off their land in a domain for a, a Walmart warehouse storage facility, uh, depot, embarkation center, something like this, claiming that it was going to create more revenue for the city by having that facility there than they were going to get off property taxes. So I never knew the outcome of that story. So if anybody knows, please leave it in the description box below. So anyway, it was about that fast to put eight of these in. So now I got the uh, Moringa oleifera seeds in here. Now the reason I chose Moringa oleifera is it is a superfood and it grows like crazy. The more you cut it, the more it grows. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to do that. And then uh, why don't I switch this one out right here? If you can see me, and then I'm just going to set it right in. Let me see if I can move the thing here. There we go. And I'm just going to set it right in, tucked in, ready to go. Okay. Now, the Iowa Farmers Unions have you on this, saying, you know what, you, you keep coming through. Now, the states that are involved in this South Dakota, Minnesota, Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois. And the companies keep coming back the same thing. Okay, so this is what Eden gave me in there. Um, you know, delivered pack. Now you notice the holes are already there. So this is a, a newer type of rock wool. You know, I like to, I'd use rock wool for many a year before anyway. So this is from Ted Mar Children in Omega Rotary Grow, the Omega Garden. So what these do is these actually clip on to a rotating system that brings the plants down to the water. And uh, you, same thing, you just insert in rock wool cubes, which I've already done right in here. So the reason I was telling you that is since these, uh, I needed to press a little hole right in the center, just something like, I mean, ever so slight, because I was putting the uh, perillia seeds in, they're not very big. Hope you can see that. And you got to make your own hole and uh, the same thing here. But I have about 64 of these to do to get into that system there also. But I will continue. So generally what I'll do is, uh, you know, you're going to be clipping from the bottom here. Let me get my clip. Yeah. So this will actually clip on to the system and hold it in place. That way you can adjust it a little more, fine tune it. If you want to bring it up a little bit or if you want to bring it down however you want to connect it you're gonna I'm also going to use wicks I'm gonna get some wicks and wick it so when it comes around it can hold the water a little bit longer bringing it up through there so this is what we're getting with Ted's system here and uh, again I'm gonna try to go for the different colors and stripes in that with super high value vegetable foods super high value so uh, originally you know when I this is the uh, the Grodan, and this is what this Rockwool Cube pulse comes into like that. Again, I'll do eight of them while I finish up here, just because I can. And this time I snapped it off a little bit, a little bit better at the seam there. I know I could cut it. You know, I have a pair of scissors right here, so maybe I will trim off that edge. And there you go, perfect. And we'll do something like that. All right, so this one takes a sliver more work. And when I say a sliver, I'm not talking much. And I just push it up through the bottom. And then I use like a table to help me and make it flat again. And there we go. And she's tucked in all nice and ready to put a seed in there. And again, you know, having, if you can find a little ice pick, I picked this one up at an estate sale for like 25 cents or 50 cents, something like this. Old school one. You can see somebody to use this forever for some sort of garage use, half painted or whatever. These things are real handy to clean out uh, tightness, like in the table where the wood comes together, although we use a sweeper and get all that stuff out. Anyway, these things are real, real handy around the house. So I, I would encourage you to keep that. But that, back to the Iowa farmers, um, you know, it's only going to, how can, can only go so long before you're going to own it. You're not going to own it because they're going to keep coming through with this eminent domain and the sequestration facilities. It's going to be trillions and trillions of dollars to uh, put this in play. Because we're not talking about one time. And that was the whole thing about the farmers. They're like, A, you're not a public utility and you're trying to ram through uh, eminent domain. But you're only going to pay us for three years of crops. And then after that, it's 100% of you just making the money. 
And that's where they're getting at. Like if you, it should be in perpetuity. If you're going to run through the land, if you're going to get an oil and natural, natural gas pipelines do that occasionally, they will, uh, you know, give some sort of longer term uh, contract where, you know, you get this much per year or whatever to run, to let them run pipes across your land or even use the land to extract the resources. But this was like, yeah, three years, whatever, farmer, that, you, that's all you get. We're a private company. We'll tell your government what to do. Now, here's the thing. Currently, the pricing for this underground sequestration and storage, 2020, the price was about $25 per ton. Now, that is far less than planting the trees on the carbon offset credits, where it got as low as about $8. But with the new mandates and the new pricing that's come out, about $85 a ton. So think about that. They're going to be running through, just in the smallest of the initial projects here, 15 million tons per year. Now to $25 per ton, okay, now it's getting up around, you know, like I said, $85 a ton. Now do the math on that. That's around $1.25 billion per year. When it was $25 a ton, it was around, what, $375 million, something like that. So I did end up uh, getting the rest of Ted's Rockwool Cubes over at Omega Garden uh, filled in right here. And I'll be able to install those. And as we go through the next set of uh, videos and whatnot, I'll, I'll show you the progress of getting these things all installed. So that's the whole thing I wanted to bring up was the, uh, you know, the price that they're going to be getting in perpetuity to charge you tax to have the government to mandate these taxes for you. All the wealth is going to be drained. It's going to be a government mandate that you spend on these things and whatever that the uh, the taxes will be, they will be. There's a lot of money. There's billions and billions at the table. Now imagine those in local government that help these projects go through. Do you think they'll have well-funded campaigns during the next election cycle? I bet they would. Do you think they'll have new offices, new roads built? Of course they will. There's so much money that you know, they're going to entice whoever decides to participate in the program will be richly rewarded in the beginning because they want everybody on board. So, of course, these companies aren't going to start raking $1.2 billion a year. They'll have to, you know, kick some of that back. Now, that was only the uh, Navigator CO2 pipeline, the Heartland G Gateway, which is 1,300 miles. It covers five states. But guess what? Summit Carbon Project is a 2,000 mile project with 32 ethanol plants. So that's the second one doing the same thing. Eminent domain, private company. We need to run the pipes through your land. I know we're not a utility. We're just a private company, but we're going to tell your governments, to, local officials, that your ordinances are usurped by our business now. Is what they're trying to say. Local ordinance doesn't apply to this. This is a global thing now. They're at it at the local level. So they're trying to say global, whatever, mandates, emergencies, whoever is doing on top of the United Nations and these uh, World Food Programs and, and a Green Deal initiatives, etc. at the global level. Not usurp anything on the local ordinance level. And they're trying to push it in court. So this is what's getting real interesting right now. So I do appreciate you watching. Remember, Eden Grow Towers, Eden Grow Systems, whatever you like to term that. And also... Uh, Ted Mar Children there at Omega Garden Rotary Grow System. And again, I'm trying to get these together, I'm trying to, you know, string it out a little bit so everybody can see it in action. And as we come to the end of the summer when harvests are in, uh, you're going to be wanting one of these, either one of them will be running side by side. We'll see the results on it. Easy to just go to your uh, Amish farm or your farmer's market right now and get these fresh veggies and lettuce, etc. But when it comes to the winter, you're going to have nothing. Will you be happy? Bye for now.